My name is Anna Duckworth. Uh, I'm a producer, and last year I produced 27 music videos. Some of my favorites were for Lars Randa um, and Sheepdog and Wolf. And last year I made my first web series called One Dollar Reserve. The ability to distribute stuff online has been hugely freeing for creatives. Like the instant gratification and feedback is like what emerging filmmakers need to get better. Every project that you do, you are making leaps forward. And if it was a traditional short film, that is going to be like a three year process from funding and development and shooting it in post production. And then you have to put it through the festival circuit and then you can finally kind of like release it. Whereas online, you just put it straight out there and you can gauge what people are thinking and how successful it is. And I think that was what was so addictive about music videos is because there are so many music video grants in New Zealand and you can just like think of an idea, action that idea, put it out there and get a lot of feedback. Seeing that process go from start to finish like 20 times in a year rather than one time in three years, you know, it's, it's really, really beneficial. For music videos, the way that it usually goes is that uh, there's an announcement of who has been given a grant and then we'll email the, all the songs that we like and say, can we pitch for you? And they say yes. Then we send it to all our directors. They make a treatment. We give our directors a couple of sessions of feedback to like help them get better at making their treatments. And then we send it to the band and they either do want to do it or they don't. With the web series that I did last year, it's a project that the Actors Program has been doing for four years. Um, they're a one-year acting training institute and they do a on-location shoot and in the original years they had been doing scenes from movies uh, for actors to put on their show reel. So we kind of pitched them the idea of like, hey, you could be doing original content, you've got these great actors, you've got this crew, you've got a budget, you know, why don't we put that to good use and make something original? Um, and they were really behind it. We have a lot of discussion and conflict about which online platforms to use. I mean, the two main ones for us at the moment are YouTube and Vimeo. Vimeo for us has always been um, quality over quantity. The community there is a much more like careful and like critical um, audience, whereas YouTube is just like the masses and like the gutter of the internet. Um, but has a, YouTube has a lot of foot traffic, you know, you're a lot more discoverable on YouTube. I mean, for me as a producer, I push for YouTube or both because that's the way you're going to get eyeballs. We've had a lot of positive and negative experiences with feedback um, from online distribution. It's really hard as a creative for someone to say mean stuff about what you're doing, but that's what critical feedback is. There have been times where people have given us like really good critical feedback that you can say, look at and say like, oh, I never thought of that that way. Other people talk about Facebook as if it is distracting them from their work, but I'm like, this is a necessary part, like tool in my arsenal. I could not produce without Facebook. I'm like a huge proponent of like getting your community involved in what you're doing. And it's always such random things that you need. You know, you're like, I need an ugly dog or like whatever. If you couldn't ask your community for that stuff, I don't know how you would find it. I feel like your options would be so limited. More and more I see that there are two schools of thought about filmmaking and, um, you know, making moving images. One is the like, get your hands dirty, get it done. Anyone can pick up a camera and make something. If you've got a story to tell, tell it. And the other is the very like tried and true, you can't do this until you've done this position and you can't do this position until you've done this position and very traditional and structured with a lot of hierarchy. Uh, I see a lot of benefit to both styles of filmmaking. You know, you need the like dedication and precision of the traditional model to like not make mistakes and not accidentally delete your footage. And you know, all those systems are there for a reason. Um, but I think more and more people are embracing, you know, DPs who didn't come up the, 
the traditional way and just like have new ideas and can just pick up a camera and shoot. I think the newer online model really suits women because anyone can jump in and do anything and there are no traditional expectations and barriers. You know, even now on a traditional film set, you very rarely see a woman grip or a male hair and makeup artist. Like, it happens, but it's not that common. Like, there are just expectations of the way things are. Whereas when you're doing it yourself, you can jump in at any position and do whatever you want, and you can prove yourself. The thing with the traditional model is that you can't prove yourself until you're given a chance. Whereas if you go out there and make something and it gets heaps of views and it's you know, really critically acc acclaimed and you know, it does really well, then you have proven yourself. I'm like trying to think if I've ever worked with a female director. Um, oh yeah, I have, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so at Candlelit Pictures, we have quite a uh, like community with lots of different combinations of roles. So we have producers, directors, you know, art directors, first ADs, all kind of in the mix around each other all the time. A lot of the music videos that I've done have been with one of our directing duos, Thunderlips, which is Jordan and Sean. Um, and they are quite like loud boys, boys, and usually the production team is women. And the, the, the directors are men and the production team is women just seems to happen that way. Um, and then we have our Emerging Directors program where we anyone can apply and they can submit treatments for music videos. And the vast majority of the Emerging Directors are men. And uh, any time that a woman is vaguely interested, I'm like, yes, you can do it. I believe in you. I feel like what I love about a female producer-director team is that you really encourage a lot of other women in other roles. Recently I did another short film with uh, Kathy McRae and almost all of our HODs were women. And I think, I mean, I think it's really important if you're trying to make a film with a female voice that it's not just the director, you know, that you, you have to kind of bring that female voice through in lots of areas. I think there are so many inspiring examples for women filmmakers at the moment and they're becoming more and more and I think the main thing is to just go and do it. There are so many people who want to help you. I think that's one thing that I've noticed myself is that anytime anyone emails me or calls me and says can I take you out for coffee I'm like yes like absolutely I want to help you so much and I want to like give people notes and give people help and put people in touch with the right people. I think that's one thing. For me starting out, I felt like the film industry was so like door in your face, like everyone's out for themselves. But the more I ask for help, the more I realize people really want to offer it, especially when it's just their advice. And no one starts off being a great filmmaker. You have to be good before you're great and you have to be kind of okay before you're good and you have to be a little bit shitty before you're okay. And it's okay to suck and it's okay to just make stuff and put it out there and keep trying and you'll get better. And I think a lot of people starting out, and I see it over and over again, get really demoralized by the fact that their taste is like up here, but their skills are down here and they think they're just not good. But no one starts good. You have to just start and, and try and do it over and over again until you get good.